in part six of this series, I will parallel the Old to the New Testament because Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 says the law is only a shadow of the good things to come. Acts chapter 20 verse 28 says, Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. You see, blood is spiritual. I had someone arguing with me in the comments that blood is not spiritual. A man died on a cross 2,000 years ago, and that blood sacrifice in Christ Jesus, that is what still cleanses our sins to this day. Okay, now if that's not spiritual, I don't know what is. Under the law of Moses and prior to the law of Moses, animal sacrifice had to be shed periodically for the remission of sins and for the impurities caused by sin. Okay, so multiple wives was covered through this remedy. Today, our bodies is the living sacrifice according to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Why? Again, as I mentioned earlier in the series, the fallen angels defiled themselves with the blood of women, and that's what produced demons. I went over this in part two. I believe this is why the devil is depicted as a blood red creature. You see, he fell from his first estate, and the offspring of this defiled union was the mixing of blood with fallen angel DNA, which again produced demons. And I believe that the awful and indignant profane appearance of the devil has something to do with the blood of men which was defiled by fallen angels again demons inherited access to the blood of men through this union between the woman and the fallen angels this is the root of demon possession which perpetuates bloodline curses you see the concubine is distinguished from a wife in the Old Testament. Under the New Testament, any man or woman who have sex outside of marriage is deemed a harlot or a whoremonger. This is why I emphasize what is the difference for our women better in years past than they are to this day. Okay, the sanctity of the woman, the virtuousness of the woman. Okay, her submissiveness to the man. Is it better today than it was yesterday? In past years. And not only the relationship between men and women, but just overall looking at the scriptures and again the accumulation of sin. Okay, the scriptures say when an evil spirit is cast out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest and finds none and brings several more wicked spirits. Then the state of that man is worse than in the beginning. And Christ emphasized, he said, So shall it also be with this wicked generation. Okay, so Christ understood that the generations only get worse because the sin accumulates in the bloodlines. All right, this is why eventually Christ is going to have to come back and destroy the earth because it's going to be too defiled. All right? Matthew chapter 10, verse 36 says, a man's enemies will be that of his own household. This wasn't the case in the Old Testament. Okay? God had to prophesy, he prophesied in Deuteronomy 28 that your brother's eye will be evil against you. During the days of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, so-called black man was more in harmony with one another. They had a knowledge of the genealogies, okay, and they had a respect for their bloodline and keeping the bloodlines pure, okay, but the generational curse scattered us throughout the nations as I explained in part five. Now, in the new covenant, according to Matthew chapter 12, verse 50, Christ said, whoever does the will of my father, that is my brother. Again, under the old covenant, you were in fellowship with the most high based on your genealogy. To a degree, your obedience as well. Well, obedience was the main thing that kept them in harmony, in peace with the most high. Okay, but he was only dealing with bloodline of Jacob. Okay, he even said he has not dealt with any other nations. Okay, he established the nation of Israel through patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Although Abraham had fathers 
that preceded him, God had cut that bloodline off. Okay. Now, when we get to Matthew chapter 13, the scriptures say the angels in the day of regeneration, they will gather those who are wheat and separate the wheat from the tares. So the angels will have to discern the human beings that are on the earth because, again, the bloodlines have been mixed. Now the, the angels are going to have to spiritually discern who belongs to God and who belongs to the devil. In the old covenant, the righteous, who were the children of Israel, they were consecrated in their own land. So they were physically consecrated from the other heathen pagan nations, particularly in Leviticus chapter 13. Okay, Leviticus 13 goes into detail. Uh, God gave commandments to the Levitical priesthood to make sure that anyone who had leprosy was consecrated in the camp from everyone else until the leprosy healed. If it never healed, they had the, that person out of the camp. Okay. But again, in the day of regeneration, when Christ returns, the day of the Lord, the angels have to discern the tares from the wheat because salvation is now determined by a man or a woman's rebirth in Jesus Christ. They have to be born again. So the Israelites were not just having sex with all these women for free. Okay, sacrifice had to be made for the blood loss of every woman. Okay, you have to examine these things real closely and read the scriptures to see what was going on at that time. Also, the men in that time, they were told the exact day that they would die. But under the new covenant, if you read the scriptures, it talks about the sting of death. And that man will seek death and not find it. So let's go to Luke chapter 14. We're going to start at verse 26. It says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, it does not literally mean hate them. Again, Christ was, he already said he comes to bring a sword, a division. Again, where a man's enemies will be that of his own household. So Christ was already reforming the minds of his disciples to not be thinking solely about genealogies. Although genealogies do give an indication of the life of a man, of what direction he'll go in because of the concentration of sin that's in his bloodline. Okay, he has a higher, some people have a higher concentration of sin. Therefore, the probability of them living a lifestyle in sin is dictated by the sins of their forefathers with the accumulation of demons. Uh, but let's continue. Verse 27, he says, and whoever does not bring his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. See, this is a new covenant. Okay, there was no cross to bear under the old covenant. Verse 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? See, the new covenant in Christ Jesus for the redemption of our sin is a denial of self, which costs men polygyny. Okay, verse 29. Lest, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and, and acts conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Okay, what is that referring to? That's referring to riches. That's referring to women, concubines, wives, multiple wives. All of those things have to be forsaken because it's a new covenant. 
again, sin progressively takes more things from us. Okay, in conclusion of this part six here, I just want to go through a quick recap of what I've broken down thus far. Now, I've already talked about the five major curses in part one, uh, expressing the magnitude and incredible cost of sin, the sin which accumulates through the generations. Also, I broke down how the devil is literally a father to those who disobey God. In part two, I broke down the origin of demon DNA and the fallen angel's transgression. In part three, I articulated the humbling of the woman, okay, in regards to a man forcing himself on the woman and how that was a generational curse. In part four, I provided proof that a man is to have one wife. In part five, I talked about evictions and eviction notices, which dismissed altogether polygyny. And forthcoming in part seven, I'll be reading again from the book of Enoch. Okay, again, in this series, polygyny is a package deal. I had to go to a deeper level to help you understand why polygyny is a package deal. And I couldn't do that without explaining some of the other things that was taken away from the children of Israel because their disobedience against the Most High. So we will continue this series in part seven. Let me know your thoughts and enjoy the rest of your day.